agents, uh, uh, you know, about how many seats you have available in a particular departure. So at this point, you know, if they are connected with Agent Connect, they don't have to ask anyone, simply log on to Agent Connect, look at the departures, look at the number of seats, because we keep on updating these number of seats on a daily basis. And they can simply just uh, contact our uh, sales uh, agent who are based in Mumbai, Delhi, and everywhere in India. They can, they can just make a booking, and which becomes very simple for every agent to, you know, to make a booking for any country. Now, uh, dear partners, today we have come up with uh, a discrete section of uh, a spectacular country. You know, uh, we already established two uh, sessions for this country, Kyrgyzstan, and uh, today we are going to give you an idea about a sector of Kyrgyzstan which is most popular, it is most loved, and you know when you talk about scenic beauty, when you talk about a tourist destination, a tourist spot, it's a perfect example of a tourist spot. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, a place called Isukul Lake. Um, we'll be doing, we'll be sharing more details to you. But before I do that, I'm going to give you some basic information about Kyrgyzstan. Because it's very important, I'm sure there would be few people who have joined in for the first time for the session. They should understand uh, what the country is all about. Partners, we are talking about Kyrgyzstan country, which is located in the CIS sector, the Central Asian sector, uh, uh, which, is, which, which, is, which used to be the USSR portion. Uh, the country is sharing their land borders with China, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and if you see the geographical location, it's a landlocked country. It's not, it doesn't have any seaports. However, you know, to, to uh, replace the requirement of a seaport, I'm going to give you a destination today. I'm going to give you a, you know, a, a special place, which is Isikul Lake, which, you know, after looking at that place, you would say, okay, there is no requirement to have a sea in <clears throat> Kyrgyzstan, you know, Isikul Lake is sufficient enough. Kyrgyzstan is not very populated country, about 6.8 million population, and primarily their local language is, is Kyrgyz and Russian. However, uh, with the change in education system, uh, you would see a lot of uh, English being spoken by the youngsters, and uh, especially the age group between, uh, you, you can say, 18 to 30. You know, this is the age group where people are actually focusing more on English language. For the simple reason that because, uh, you know, these these people, you know, these youngsters, they want to explore the world. They want to stay connected with the entire nation, entire, uh, you know, nations of different different uh, nationalities of different country. Now, Islam is the official religion of the country. However, you'll see a lot of uh, uh, Orthodox Christian um, uh, people from Russia and people from different parts of the world living in Kyrgyzstan. And that makes it you know, a diversified nation, which actually looks after every requirement. Kyrgyzstan uh, is very easy to connect when you talk about uh, connecting from India. Uh, we have had direct flights uh, in the past, and we now have a new flight in place, uh, which is called Avia Traffic. And the flight is connecting twice in a week uh, from Delhi, from Delhi to Kyrgyzstan. And the capital of Kyrgyzstan is Bishkek, which we're talking about. Um, Bishkek is the place where we have the international airport, and it's exactly the place where the flight goes to. Now, uh, the flight flight is comparatively uh, a decent flight. I wouldn't say, uh, you know, a, a full-fledged carrier. But however, it satisfies all the requirements of travel. You can have the luggage booked in advance. You can pre-book your meals. You can also book Indian meals while going to Bishkek. And uh, the duration is something which is very lucrative, you know, for a duration of about three hours and 20 minutes, you can simply land to a nation uh, which is full of surprises for you. Uh, now, Bishkek, we have already discussed in our previous uh, uh, session, but I'll give you a brief idea. Bishkek is the capital and uh, it is the business center of Kyrgyzstan, you can say. Uh, to connect to Kyrgyzstan, I must also give you information on the visa process. The visa process, you can say by far is the simplest of uh, any CIS country. Uh, Kyrgyzstan, if you want to visit Kyrgyzstan, all you need to do is you need to have a valid passport with six months validity. That's all you need to have. Uh, at, at the same time, you also need to have a PAN card. Uh, 
So if you have two things with you, you're good to travel. So all you need to do is simply go online uh, because the visa process is, is online nowadays. You can simply go online, fill the visa application form, and you can easily get your visa approved within five to seven working days. However, uh, if you have an expanded trip, apart from a normal tourist trip, let's say you're doing a road trip or you have multiple nations to cover if you're crossing land borders, then you can also go to the Bishkek Embassy, which is based in Delhi, the Kyrgyzstan Embassy, and uh, you can apply for a stamp visa. The process remains the same. All you need to do is fill an application form, go to the embassy, submit your cases, and you can get your visa approved in about five to seven working days. Any agents, any partner who feels any issue with that, uh, Duke Travels is always there. You can always get in touch with us because we have speciality in applying visa for Kyrgyzstan. And uh, you can always get in touch for any visa issues for Kyrgyzstan. Now let's come to the, the, the main sector which we're going to talk about today. Uh, Isakul Lake, which is actually the catch of the day. Uh, Isaloon, I would like to invite you to talk about this place because this is your expertise and, you know, You've been looking after this sector for a long time. I know I've been to Isikul Lake, but I want you to explain what is your point of view about Isikul Lake and how this place is different from other lakes in the world. Let's say your neighboring country, uh, Almaty, where Big Almaty Lake is very famous, but I would still like you to differentiate between Big Almaty Lake and Isikul Lake. Okay, so welcome everybody once again. Uh, Isikul Lake, is defined as a pearl of Kyrgyzstan. So uh, it is uh, known as the second largest mountain lake in the world, uh, after like uh, Titicaca Lake in South America. And uh, the name is a pool, uh, it, uh, translating from Kyrgyz language, it means hot lake. So even though uh, you like you can see on the picture, Isikul Lake is surrounded by by uh, snow cap peaks. Uh, even though it never get like freezes, so that's why uh, it calls Isikul. And uh, like uh, we talked before, it is the pretty big lake. The long of the lake is 182 kilometers, and the wide is 60 kilometers. So it's pretty big lake. Uh, most of tourists who already came, uh, they were saying that it is not a lake, it's a sea. So uh, total area of the lake is 6,236 uh, square kilometers. And the deepest point of this lake is 668 meters. So it's pretty uh -huh. deep. And on the shore... It is like, also uh, said that this is the second largest uh, alpine water lake in the world. Yes, yes, exactly. One of the 10 largest lakes in the world and the mountain lake is the second one. So uh, okay. on the beaches, like on the shores where, where we can swim, the de uh, depth starts from like, you know, uh, goes till three meters maybe where we can already like, you know, swim and go there. And... Uh, it is uh, Isikul situated uh, 260 kilometers from Bishkek, uh, from capital of Kyrgyzstan. And usually yeah. uh, drive time uh, by car from Bishkek to Isikul takes about uh, three and a half hour, hours. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, if uh, we are going by coach or by bus, it takes about uh, four hours or four and a half. And now we're going to talk about the entire journey of uh, you yes, know, traveling yes. from Bishkek to uh, Lake Isikul. If you see on your screen, uh, I've opened a map uh, which actually tells you exactly the different, uh, you know, the journey uh, when you start from Bishkek and you go towards the place called Cholponata. Now, before we start discussing about the journey, Isalu, we want to know because, I, you know, this entire lake is, is pretty big. So, uh, I want you to mention the areas where we actually take our tourists and what are the places where we take them. So let's say uh, the first one where we take them is Cholponata. Cholponata, yeah. which is the name of the village where you have a lot of resorts and a lot of beaches yes. are there. What is the other right. place? What are the other places where we can take them? Because this is the one side of the lake. I'm sure the other side of the lake as well where we can take them. So, uh, so mostly, we usually we bring our tourists to the north uh, shore of Isikul. Of course, there are lots of, you know, unexplored places on the south shore of Isikul. 
and uh, one of them uh, we'll explain later on it's very nice uh, fairy tale canyon it's on the south shore and also like if we uh, if you look at on the map uh, from the beginning to the in the end of the lake, like there is a city Caracol, and there is a very you know famous ski resort uh, at Caracol. So it's like uh, Isikul province. It's famous not only because of summer like beach uh, tourism, but also in winters. Uh, it is like you know it's very famous, and some people saying it's the best ski resort in entire Central Asia. Like lots of uh, skiers and snowboarders they comes to Caracol and uh, but for people who just like looking for some water activities or like you know just uh, uh, beach tourism and summer like you know they are going to the north uh, shore because there are lots of resorts like you said and uh, all these water activities cafes restaurants and like you know clubs and everything is uh, on the north mm -hmm. So we will start with the uh, you know the journey from Bishkek to Cholponatar first. Then we will discuss about the journey from Cholponatar to Karakol, or maybe people would like to go from Bishkek to Karakol directly. So yeah. you know all these three journeys we're going to talk about. Let's start with Bishkek to Cholponatar first. Yeah. So uh, like on the way from Bishkek to Cholponatar, there are uh, lots of uh, you know destinations which must be visited. And uh, the first one is the Hawaii complex. It is uh, not far from Bishkek, only like about 50 kilometers. It is a local restaurant like complex uh, where usually uh, tourists, they love to stay there and take a pictures. Uh, it is a restaurant complex with small lake inside. So on the picture now you can see uh, there is a local restaurant on the water uh, you, you will see the pictures now as well. And there is also like small hotel inside and there are different sculptures and uh, like locals uh, often goes there like in summers to spend some time. Uh, so, I need to stop you there for a moment. I, I, would, yes. I would like to know that, you know, whenever whenever we plan a, a journey towards uh, Isipu Lake, so, you know, what are the perfect timings? How do you start actually? Because, for example, what I'm what, what I want to know is, let's say we have uh, Indian tourists, uh, you know, there is a family and they want to stay at Isikul Lake for about two nights. OK, mm -hmm. for example, they want to spend two nights at Isikul Lake. So mm -hmm. what is the preferred timing? Do you advise them to start during the morning time or you would like to take them in the night time? You know, how would you like to plan their trip? So uh, I would recommend for the family groups who wants to stay like for two nights, it is a cool, it's uh, like, you know, uh, good because before we used to make only one night in this cool. So they can start like, you know, early in the morning, start from Bishkek. They can visit all the destinations on the way to Isukul. And uh, actually, they uh, can reach Isukul uh, maybe like afternoon at four or five o'clock. Uh, like with all the stops and like, you know, lunch on the way. And uh, if they will start in the morning, it will be much better. So once they are reaching in the evening, like uh, they have, they can like, you know, enjoy the evening view of lake. And in the next morning for the like second night, they can explore uh, some places in Cholponata. They can enjoy the water activities. Uh, they can also like you know visit there are some uh, museums uh, like complexes in Isukul uh, for the tourists and like second they can like you know just even enjoy laying on the beach and enjoying swimming. What you're saying is that during the day trip I mean a day trip to uh, from Bishkek to Isukul is much better because uh, to enjoy the scenic beauty it's important yes. to drive during the daytime. Yes that, yes that's perfect. exactly yeah. So, so let's say we uh, leave from Bishkek at about uh, 10 a.m. in the morning. And how far is this place, Hawaii, where we are taking them? So it's uh, only 50 kilometers from Bishkek. Uh, drive time takes about maybe one and a half hour, maybe one hour maximum. And uh, once they're reaching there, usually tourists spend their maybe half an hour it's enough to take a pictures maybe somebody can like you know use the restroom and uh, they also can enjoy like some local beer or any drinks 
uh, but actually it is not allowed uh, to bring uh, like you know uh, ready snacks once we try to do it there like here in Kyrgyzstan local restaurants there uh, get some like you know strict uh, rules that it is not allowed to bring food from outside to the restaurant and feed people because if something happens so the you know uh, responsible responsibility laying on the restaurants so but once we used to make like you know with some pokora and drinks we uh, had some like you know small uh, lunch mm -hmm. kind of lunch at, at this place great great now we reached hawaii uh, we left in the morning let's say 10 o'clock we're reaching hawaii by about uh, 10 30 to 10 45 and it's yeah um we leave from there let's say maximum by 11 30 we are leaving from hawaii towards cholponata village yeah. so uh so what next you know where we take them next uh so uh the next one near the city small town uh tokmok it's uh, the next city of uh, town of uh, after bishkek there is a uh, burana tower so now so I would like to show it, uh, you know, on a map because uh, yeah. I took, I did some research on this thing. Uh, uh, let me just show it to you. Mm -hmm. So this is the journey from Bishkek to <laughs> Cholponata. Now, if you see on the map, this is the village called Tokmok. Okay. Now, after reaching Tokmok, it's actually not on the way. You have to go a little far from Tokmok. If you see this one. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Right. So if you see this map, so you talk more and you take a drive within, you know, uh, in, inside the landscape area and then you reach Burana Tower. So a little off the way. So I think, you know, not everybody likes to go to Burana Tower or normally you take people to Burana Tower by going to well, a Uh No, actually, actually it is like uh, optional, but uh, if mm -hmm. people require because usually they're researching as well and they're asking for the Burana Tower. They want to see it because it's archaeological, like, you know, uh, uh, destination. So they love to see it. But uh, like in standard itinerary, we usually bring them uh, straight to Choponata without Burana Tower. Without Burana Tower. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, talk about Burana Tower. Yeah, uh, Burana Tower is uh, a large minaret in Chui Valley. So Chui Valley is the place where uh, Tokmok Town is situated. And uh, it is uh, so 80 kilometers from Bishkek, uh, seat from the capital. Uh, the tower was built in 11th century. Uh, at, the, uh, that, at that place, there were city uh, Balasagun. So, uh, this uh, minaret uh, before it used to be 45 meters high, but uh, because of the earthquakes and like, you know, some uh, nature changes, so it's getting lower, uh, but uh, still it's a very important archeologic uh, place. And you know, these uh, steps inside, they're, they're so narrow and people who wants to reach the top of the uh, tower, they like, you know, might, might be not having the, some claustrophobia or something like that because it's really very narrow and it's dark. I so remember, I remember be being in the, inside this tower. I remember being inside this tower when I visited the Burana and uh -huh. uh, uh, one of the local guide, you know, who took me to Burana Tower, he gave me an interesting story. You know, there's a story about the king of Burana. I'm going to say that story to you. You can correct me if that story is true. So mm -hmm. in, um, in 11th century, there was a king uh, who built this tower and uh, the king had a daughter and uh, his, his daughter was, cur was cursed that uh, the moment uh, she will turn 18, she will die. Okay, yeah. so what, uh, what the king did was the king built this tower and he actually hid his daughter inside the tower. And the day she turned 18, you know, he was taking care of all the precautions that he, she shouldn't die. But unfortunately, the food which was brought to her, that food had a, had a Scorpio inside. And the Scorpio bit the daughter of that king and the daughter died. So this is a small tale which was given to me by the, by the guide. Yeah, just, just tell me if it is correct or if I missed yes, something. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's correct. It's correct. 
and yeah. I also happen to see and uh, you know uh, um, apart from this tower there is an archaeological site if we see on the picture you know these small rocks these not yeah. these are not actually just rocks these are archaeological findings and the dome uh, this small dome which you see on the screen um, this is again an archaeological site where there are a lot of artifacts available and there is also a small museum of artifacts near Gorana Tower. Can you hear me, Isolo? Yes, 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 correct. Great, great, great. So uh, I think it's worth, uh, it's worth seeing this place because uh, a lot of history is attached to Burana Tower. Let's move on to the next thing towards Ochoponata. And uh, moving on, I would like to show a video to our people, uh, which would give them an idea about how the journey is all about while they're moving towards uh, uh, Choponata. Uh, you know, I happened to record one video when I was going towards uh, Chokonath. I'll let me show it to you. This is the uh, video towards the uh, uh, journey of Isikol. People can actually see how the roads are. Right. I see the roads are in perfect condition. Uh, I visited the place about two years ago. Is it still the same? The roads are in perfect condition? Yes. Uh, some Like last year and before also, they were reconstructing part by part to make it even better. So nowadays, mm -hmm. look, uh, road looks like this. It's uh, in very good condition. Yeah. This is again uh, some view of, uh, you know, while you're going towards the journey. And uh, let, let us come towards uh, a halt when we take. Uh, I remember, you know, uh, after crossing Hawaii, when you move towards Isikul Lake, you know, people start feeling hungry because uh, uh, they, if they're leaving uh, from Bishkek by about 10, 10 a.m. in the morning, uh, after two hours, two hours, 30 minutes, they start feeling hungry. So what we did was we took a stop, uh, you know, at one of the local restaurants, uh, you know, on the way. This uh, restaurant is a local restaurant. It's perfectly made, you know, uh, surrounded by mountains. If you see the view, you know, it's all surrounded by mountains and uh, it has got all the facilities. Somebody would like to freshen up, somebody would like to go to toilet. So this is one place where they can just go and relax. And um, I happen to try one of the most amazing local food in this restaurant, which is, you know, uh, amidst the journey and, uh, you know, just have a, a look at the plate. You know, you know the, this this table which I have um, in local language. This this is written as Alma. Tell me if I'm correct, Isuru. Yes, yes, exactly. It's Alma. Tell me, uh, do we do we have more restaurants like this on the way? And how do we actually uh, give food to our uh, tourists? So, like uh, after uh, Hawaii, well, the places where you show show now these roads, it is Bomb George. Uh, Bone George is um, like you know about maybe uh, 30 40 minutes of uh, drive time it takes uh, when you're crossing you know the Bone George and uh, there are lots of local restaurants in this George like you know uh, between the mountains and um, we used to have uh, uh, lunch like we used to organize lunches in this restaurant which you have shown before uh, well, before we, uh, like when it's not so cold, we are having some packed lunches with us, like uh, we're bringing it uh, in advance. And once people reaching there, like lunch is already uh, is ready uh, on the buffet. So our tourists can enjoy it the same like in the fish gag. So every, all food is on the buffet and uh, they're having it. When it's uh, hot in summers, uh, we used to like, you know, teach the chef chief from this restaurant to prepare some Indian food. Of course, it's a kind of local style, but still Indian taste food. 
and people like it and enjoying it and uh, they can have some local food as well if they want to try it uh, i think it's a great effort i salute if you're trying to arrange indian style local food um, yeah. while on a journey you know in, oh, towards isitul lake you're surrounded by mountains no other facilities available and you're yeah. going to give indian sort of food to people uh, i think it's a blessing yeah we are trying our best of course still uh, if they want to have something else like uh, maybe they can have a drinks or uh, if they uh, don't like this food like which was prepared like indian local style they can try local food because they have some veg options and some non veg options and um, so lunch is going pretty good on the way like actually it's like packed lunch on the way but it's still proper normal lunch not like in the boxes so yeah. people so, so you try to give it like a buffet yeah. in the restaurant yeah. right yeah yeah exactly okay let's let's talk about this boom gourd which you just mentioned what else can be done at this place so uh, at the boom george uh, we can make uh, uh, make a uh, rafting tours because you see this river it calls uh, chu it's pretty like you know it flows very fast so now you can see the pictures uh, usually people goes for the rafting to this bomb george because it's just uh, in the middle of bishkek capital and isikul so on the way either you if you're like you know uh, having a holiday in isikul you can come to bomb george and uh, have a rafting tour i think so, you know uh, very... indians are aware about rafting because uh, in north india uh, people do a lot of rafting. Uh, we have Ganges here, and uh, mm -hmm. in Ganges, people do rafting near Rishikesh area. So and uh, I would like to know what kind of rapids are there. Yeah, what kind of rapids are they? Very dangerous rapid, and uh, and do do you have some trainers available there to look after? Uh, well, yes. There uh, usually, if you are not like uh, very like you know experienced in the, in the rafting, there are of course people who can. Uh, you know, uh, take control, who can help you. And it's not, uh, it's, you know, enough dangerous, but it's still, it's okay. Like, uh, if you want to try, it will be okay. Okay, that's great. Now, moving on to the next thing, uh, we have checked the boom gorge and uh, rafting has been escaping on the way, on the, uh, you know, the journey to physical. Yes. Yeah, so, so what I need to know is that, you know, after Boom Gorge, how can we move ahead with the journey, Aisilu? So, uh, in our standard itinerary, usually after the Boom Gorge, there is a first uh, small town uh, in Isikul province. It calls uh, Balukchi. And uh, from that place to Choponata, uh, road takes about like 45 minutes. And uh, usually we are going straight to Choponata after uh, Boom Gorge. And um, we are reaching the uh, resort where we are gonna stay for night or for two. And uh, this fairy tale canyon, it's uh, like you know, uh, like Burana Tower. It's optional, but uh, it is really must visited place as well. Uh, fairy tale canyon, it's uh, on the south shore of uh, Isikul Lake. And uh, if you have like you know time, uh, even like you know. For the, for the fairy tale canyon, we can make a day trips from Bishkek and coming back to Bishkek uh, from like Bishkek fairy tale canyon and uh, Bishkek uh, back again. It's like uh, two or two and a half hours uh, drive uh, time from Bishkek. So like day trip to fairy tale canyon would be very nice option because this place is really much with must visit it. Uh, it is uh, uh, about. Uh, it calls fairy tale because uh, of the view of this place. So you can see different uh, rocks which get the shapes of some, uh, you know, uh, sculptures and the uh, color of the mountains. These rocks, it's like oh. you know, red. So mm -hmm. it's like it looks like it, it, uh, it's more like a canyon, more like a canyon, yeah. just like the Grand yeah. Canyon we have. Yes. It's more like a canyon and. Uh, yes. uh, the similar thing we have in uh, Kazakhstan as the yes, Charin like Canyon. Canyon. Well. Yes, it looks like Charin Canyon in Kazakhstan. Okay. Okay. So let's say we reach Cholponata village and um, mm -hmm. we check 
get into the resort now what activities yeah. i see a lot of activities available um, at isipul yeah. lake uh, so, so uh, is there a season is there is there a season for for these activities to happen uh, yes. a time frame a time period yes like uh, if we are having uh, talking about summer itinerary when it's uh, very hot like uh, you know some um, july august i would say uh, we can uh, enjoy these uh, water activities like bananas, uh, fly boards, and uh, aqua park in, uh, like, you know, in the next village after Choponata. It's not so far. And uh, in Choponata, in all the resorts, in all the public uh, beaches, we can enjoy all these water activities because everywhere in, on every beach, they, uh, like, you know, giving for the rent or organizing these kind of activities. Uh, it, it also, if uh, yeah, uh, on the next slide you can see the cruise and boat trips at the Sipul Lake, uh, which can be organized not only in the summer but like uh, maybe in some uh, autumn or early spring or sometimes. Actually, we can start uh, going to Isipul from February, even like in winter. Some tourists they want to see the lake, they want to enjoy it. And I would like this? to give some information about uh, cruise boat trips at Isikul Lake uh, because we have done uh, quite a lot of uh, trips like this. So uh, there are two ways you can utilize boats in Isikul Lake. One can be, let's say you reach during the daytime and you hire a boat cruise for let's say one hour or two hours. The cruise boat will take you to the entire lake, will take the entire round of the lake uh, and you can have some dry snacks, you can have some beer, you can have some drinks on the boat and you can you just enjoy with the music and you know actually go with the picture of, of this entire area. Now the second way you can use the cruises, you can hire it for your gala dinners as well. If you want to do a gala dinner, that can also be done and believe me for a fact, it's a wonderful experience. The, you know, this cruise is cruising around in the nighttime through the lake and you're having your gala dinner. I want to show you an experience, uh, you know, a small video, which I have of, a, a, you know, a family group, which we did. And uh, we organized a, a gala dinner on the boat, on the cruise. I hope you would like it. Uh, let's have a look at it. So you can see the outside of uh, the boat, you know, people who are not there and say, if you want to smoke, if somebody would like to smoke, they can just move out of the main area and try to smoke. So, you know, this was one, one thing which you can do at, uh, uh, you know, on the cruise at Lake Isikul. And uh, I'm going to show you some pictures of, uh, you know, the kind of celebrations which we have done in the past at Lake Isikul. And uh, you would be amazed to see that we also you know, celebrated Independence Day on uh, Isikul Lake. You know, this is one family group, and they actually they actually flew kites. Uh, there was a kite kite flying competition we organized on uh, Lake Isikul, and uh, the, you know the feedback has been amazing. I mean, just look at this. You know, understand the why you are standing uh, in an ex-USSR country and uh, you're flying uh, your flag and you're singing your national anthem on an independence day and you know when you organize things like this uh, it actually brings a different kind of feeling altogether. Yes. So you know th these are a few things which we have done and uh, people have really appreciated these things. Now uh, I also would like to now because when you're staying on the on the beaches when you're staying near the lake, it's important to understand what kind of properties we have and what kind of things uh, the properties offer. So I'm gonna show you some um, resorts 
I'm going to show you the most important and prominent properties uh, which we are selling uh, on a regular basis and sending our clients there. Uh, and that can give you an idea of the kind of uh, facilities available near uh, Isikul Lake. So this, if you see on your screen, this is Carbon Four Season Resort at Isipul Lake, and uh, look at the view of, uh, you know, the look at these pictures, mesmerizing beauty. It's just out of the world. Now, if you see that, you know, apart from the hotel, you have private cottages as well. So let's say if there is a family of about uh, 10 people, 15 uh, people, there is a small group of friends, uh, you know, they don't like to stay in hotel. They want to make their own party, their own villa. So they can, you know, hire this private cottage and make a stay. And it's going to be a great experience. And of course, you know, these resorts, uh, these resorts have their private beaches. So you see, this is the entire facility, the entire area. Now, if you look at this picture, you would see, uh, you know, the private area acquired by the uh, this entire resort, and the way they have actually established this entire resort, uh, and, you know, uh, in, in between no facility area because it, it's actually uh, sort of barren land all, almost everywhere. So the, these are the private villas, VIP villas available. Now, you know, this is the view inside the room. Um, it seems like a standard uh, uh, double room. This is the private deck uh, where people can go in the evening, uh, click pictures, have a drink, and just uh, relax for a moment, you know. Uh, the peace you would feel, you know, is, is amazing, is out of this world. Of course, you can also organize some private sports activities uh, on the beach where you're staying. Now, this was Carbon Four Season. Uh, I'm also going to show you another resort, which is called Caprice. Caprice Resort. This is again a four-star resort. And uh, this is the hotel of the resort. And the pictures of uh, rooms you would see now. It's a private pool where people can enjoy. And the pool is actually near the beach area. All the modern facilities are available. Rooms are air conditioned, uh, cold, hot water supply in the room. And uh, the resort, this is, look at the private cottages area because this uh, resort, Caprice also has a lot of private cottages. This is a family room. I'm sure, you know, for partners and uh, our travel agents, it's very important to understand the property and the kind of facilities you would get. Uh, then only it would be easy for you to explain it to your clients further. So that's a family room where, where you get two rooms together for a family of six, seven people can easily stay there. Then this is your, uh, the kitchen area, uh, the restaurant. So uh, the restaurant is filled with all 
uh, facilities. Of course, the breakfast and food provided are more local and continental mixed. But uh, I'm sure Isilu would agree to it. And in this resort, uh, we have taken our own chef and made complete Indian buffet many times and organized gala dinners. Uh, yes. Tell me about that, Isilu. So uh, on the in this restaurant where, where you can see now buffet, it is a main restaurant where usually uh, breakfast is going. Uh, we used to make gala dinners inside. Also uh, near the beach, like on the beach, there is another one. A uh, restaurant where we used to make a uh, gala dinner as well. So we're bringing our uh, Indian chef from Bishkek, and he's preparing all this food like they're having proper Indian uh, dinner. And we can bring the dancers from Bishkek as well, so they can like uh, people can enjoy gala dinner at this uh, resort as well. So it's it was really good experience before. Yeah. Now tell me something about it. Uh, uh, you know, let's say uh, if you know, our travel agents uh, try to organize, a, you know, a big wedding, a big function near the beach area. So mm -hmm. how, what do you think are the challenges and uh, what are the things which we can do to the best? Uh, well, uh, at first, uh, it depends on the, like, you know, travel dates of uh, tourists. Uh, like uh, in summers, there are lots of uh, tourists from uh, Kazakhstan and from Russia who comes to Isukun like, you know, for 10 days or for two weeks, something like that. And uh, uh, so, like we used, used to come only for one or two nights or you know, maximum, like not, not more. And it, may, it might be challenging to like, you know, rent all the resort only for one night uh, for like, you know, for not big, small, big group of people. But if it is a big group, I think uh, it is possible to uh, organize, to, like, you know, to make them giving a rent for us. But because uh, they're like, you know, uh, people from uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan and Russia, they come, they come into Isikul uh, and sometimes they want to stay even for one month. So they're renting the, uh, these um, villas or uh, staying in the normal, like standard rooms and they're staying for long. So uh, the only challenge is about this time. So we discussed about Cholponata village, which seems to be the main area where you have a yeah. lot of resorts and a lot of activities happening. And most important, which is the nearest to Bishkek city. Uh, I also uh, you know, would like you to uh, give us an idea about Karakul, which is on the other side of, uh, you know, it's, I think Cholponata is over here. Yeah. But uh, the Karakol is totally on the other side of Isikul Lake. So what are the, you know, features and uh, what are the, you know, most important areas of Karakol where we take people? I see the journey takes about five or almost six hours uh, if you go yeah. in a stretch. But if you take yeah. some break in between, uh, you will definitely reach about seven to eight hours you will take by yes, road. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So uh, usually mm -hmm. we bring people like uh, if we're saying about summertime, uh, it's better to come to go to Karakol from Choponata city, like you know, to have a stop at least one night at Choponata from Bishkek. It would not be so tiring for the tourists, so they can have rest and, like, you know, enjoy a little bit at night and then go to Karakol. But if we are saying talking about the. Because if you see on the screen, yeah, I said yeah. from Choponata, it only takes two and a half hours to Karakol. From yes. Choponata to Karakol, it's just the yes. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. And now, uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, tell me. No, no, no. Uh, it's like uh, it's uh, for summer itinerary, like for summer time. And if we will say about the winter time, uh, if we go to Karakol to the ski resort, so the journey will take the same like five hours from Bishkek to Karakol without stops, like mostly without stops uh, in winter. And we can reach uh, like if we start in the morning, like ten o'clock at. Uh, Maybe three, four o'clock for sure, we might uh, reach Karakol. Okay. Now we're going to talk about uh, Karakol a ski resort, especially. Um, tell us about Karakol, you know. Uh, what are the facilities available near and where people can stay and what kind of resorts, what kind of hotels are there and what are the activities which, are, which can actually be done at Karakol ski base? Uh, so the, uh, at the Karakol ski resort, uh, there is a resort called Caprice as well. 
it is like you know second uh, resort uh, in Istanbul from this caprice chain the one which we uh, saw before uh, in Toponata and another one is ski resort in Karakol so we can see it on the picture now uh, Karakol ski resort is uh, as I told very famous and uh, some people saying it's the best in Central Asia for skiers it's uh, it was known before uh, even from a former from USSR there was a ski, uh, you know, camp uh, at that time, and uh, uh, people from you know all the countries from all over the world they they love coming here, uh, coming to Karakol because uh, the area uh, where they are skiing it is like surrounded by forest. It's pine forest, and uh, there are three different uh, uh, lines, like cable car lines for uh, the skiers, uh, like everybody starting from the beginners uh to like you know experienced skiers they can enjoy the lines the areas where they ski in, ski in no Karakol. no i have a question isilu yeah uh, uh what i see that karakol is a ski resort which is mostly uh you know operational and during the winter time because that that's the time when you have a lot of snow for the skiers and uh it's a cool is being operated mostly during the summer time now, yeah. now these, these are totally two different landscapes, uh, you know, comparing to each other. One uh, is more like a beach area. Then you're taking uh, somebody, uh, you know, with a journey of two and a half hours uh, to the highest mountain area. Uh, how do we correlate between each other? Let's say somebody is going in summers. So they go to beach and then they go to mountains. So during summer, what are the activities available in Karakul? What do they do in Karakul? So uh, in Karakol, uh, there is uh, uh, like like in Bishkek, they can have uh, paragliding. They can visit the very famous uh, like you know there is a museum of uh, Prizhevalsky in Karakol, and there is a Orthodox church uh, in Karakol city inside uh, like in the center. And uh, like in summers, uh, Karakol is also very attractive for the tourists. Uh, they can see uh, more like, you know, uh, nature uh, and uh, they can also go to the beach side uh, in to Isipul Lake. So, uh, but like I, I would recommend to go to Karakol in uh, winters. Uh, still in winters, it looks much better and uh, you can, you will enjoy much more. Well, what do you think about the journey? Because uh, I think in winter, if there is a lot of heavy snowfall, then you're actually going to the extreme then what about the the, the roads uh, are they sometimes blocked or you think the roads are pretty good to travel in winters uh to like uh, in Isik in karakol uh it is like tourist destination so uh the roads usually in winters they're like you know they're cleaning if there are like any very hard heavy snowfall the roads are also like you know good because uh, they are waiting for, like, you know, the season, winter season in Karakol to, like, you know, lots of tourists to come. So they're uh, taking care of the roads. So it's uh, it's okay. With, roads are good. Roads are good. What about the food? How do we manage food at Karakol? What do you think? Well, in Karakol, uh, I think it would be uh, more like local food for tourists, like for Indian tourists. Uh, but still, if we are having like, you know, a big group of people who wants to enjoy like, you know, skiing for a few days, like two days, we can bring our Indian chef and he can cook like, you know, breakfasts, lunches and dinners. So if possible. Okay. Uh, any challenges uh, about local people? How, how's the behavior of local people, uh, you know, uh, towards Indian tourists? What do you think? Well, you know, in Karakol, exactly, it is uh, known in Kyrgyzstan as the, you know, uh, young people uh, city. It's a city where lots of universities, like uh, like in Bishkek, most of people who live in Isikul province, they go to, uh, to Karakol uh, for the universities. So, uh, uh, in, like, you know, uh, not in summers, like in uh, winters, it's very uh, like crowded place. Like there are lots of uh, students there in Karakol and uh, uh, lots of foreigners who go to the uh, ski resort. So uh, Karakol is really nice place in winters for the tourists because there are lots there are lots of uh, uh, you know guest houses and hotels in Karakol. 
because it's a uh, like place for the skiers they they come from everywhere so people will not uh, i'm uh, sure our partners also have this question in their mind um, you know when you say a lot of local food uh, and uh, when indians are going because they are very particular about having vegetarian food i'm sure you know that so mm -hmm. You know what can be done to, uh, in this case if somebody is particular for vegetarian food and they still would, still would like to have the adventure at Karakol or well, Chopuna. Uh, Chopuna, I'm sure we can have vegetarian, but what yeah. about Karakol? Yes, in Karakol the same. Uh, if people like, if we, it, it is not a big group, but still they want to go to Karakol, uh, we can offer like you know some local food with uh, like even if it is a local dish which uh, supposed to consist of meat. We can like you know remove it and make it like veg option. So vegetarians, vegetarian food is not a problem, you know, for the tourists if they want to go there. Okay. Any any experience you would like to share uh, of Isakul Lake, uh, you know, because you have handled so many clients, so many customers um, uh, at Isakul, which you would like oh. to share as any pleasing experience. Uh, you know, in it's a cool, like in Choponata City uh, at uh, like summer time when we had a groups. Uh, if it is a big group, of course we were bringing our chef and the, he is cooking the food, Indian food. But still, we used to use one restaurant as well, uh, the same like in uh, Boom George on the way, which is on the way. It is a restaurant in Choponata City. Uh, we also taught them how to prepare Indian food. And in one of the resorts in is in Chopon in Isikul as well. It's not Choponata, it's a little bit further. Uh, the chef of this place, uh, they are like you know learning how to make Indian food, even if it is like a little bit maybe local style. Still, they're preparing food for the tourists and uh, people enjoying it really. I think that's uh, really appreciable that locals are even trying their uh, efforts. Yeah. Uh, to the maximum and uh, they're trying to you know make it like um, home for indians uh, whenever yes. they're trying to reach there that's yeah. really appreciable isalu but we really want to thank you so much uh, for, for all the information you have shared with us today uh, i'm sure our partners uh, they must have understood uh, the, the kind of beauty lies within isakul and karakol region and uh, the kind of versatility these products offer uh, you can go for anything. You can have a family tour. You can organize a luxury tour. Uh, you can uh, try. You can go for a wedding tour. I mean, if you have a, a wedding which needs to be organized mm -hmm. at uh, one of the mm -hmm. most authentic mm -hmm. places, that can also be done. And um, uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, you know. If you have any questions, partners, uh, uh, I'm sure uh, you're writing it on the chat, and my team is there to answer them simultaneously. Uh, uh, so I would like to end the session uh, for today, and I would also like to inform again to my travel agents and all the partners that people, you know, who would like to get updated to all the information, they can simply connect to Agent Connect portal of our uh, website dukeinternational.com. Just go to Agent Connect. Uh, make an ID for yourself, register yourself. It's simply, it's, it's free of cost, doesn't charge anything at all. And you can have update, you can have access to our live inventory, which is updated on a regular basis and the prices, uh, which would be specifically given for travel agents. I would like to thank you for joining in today. And I'm sure you all are uh, taking care of social distancing. You all are uh, looking after your loved ones, looking after yourself. Uh, we hope to recover soon from this pandemic situation. Uh, I'm going to meet you on Monday now with a special uh, informative session about uh, the capital of Kazakhstan, Nu Sultan, and a very discreet and unexplored place called Borovoy Lake uh, uh, surrounding uh, the Nu Sultan area. Uh, do read about this section, Nu Sultan and uh, Borovoy. And on Monday at 3 p.m. when we meet, we're going to talk in detail about it. Thank you so much for joining in today. You take care of yourself. Have a nice day. Thank you.